Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, my TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, wherever you're watching. And I'm going to continue reading Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Chapter 2. We were brought up together, there was not quite a year difference in our ages. I need not say that we were strangers to any species of disunion or dispute. Harmony was the soul of our companionship, and the diversity and contrast that subsisted in our characters drew us nearer together. Elizabeth was of a calmer and more concentrated disposition, but with all my ardor, I was capable of more intense application and was more deeply smitten with the thirst for knowledge. She busied herself with following the aerial creations of the poets, and in the majestic and wondrous scenes which surrounded our Swiss home, the sublime shapes of the mountains, the changes of the seasons, tempests and calm, the silence of winter and the life and turbulence of our alpine summers, she found ample scope for admiration and delight. While my companion contemplated with a serious and satisfied spirit the magnificent appearances of things, I delighted in investigating their causes. The world was to me a secret which I desired to divine. Curiosity, earnest research to learn the hidden laws of nature, gladness akin to rapture as they were unfolded to me, are among the earliest sensations I can remember. On the birth of a second son, my junior by seven years, my parents gave up entirely their wandering life and fixed themselves in their native country. We possessed a house in Geneva and a campagne on Belle Rive, the eastern shore of the lake, at the distance of rather more than a league from the city. We resided principally in the latter, and the lives of my parents were passed in considerable seclusion. It was my temper to avoid a crowd, and to attach myself fervently to a few. I was indifferent, and therefore, to my schoolfellows in general, but I united myself in the bonds of the closest nature to one among them. Henry Clerval was the son of a merchant of Geneva. He was a boy of singular talent and fancy. He loved enterprise, hardship, and even danger for its own sake. He was deeply read in books of chivalry and romance. He composed heroic songs and began to write many a tale of enchantment and knightly adventure. He tried to make us act plays and to enter into masquerades in which the characters were drawn from the heroes of Rods and Bales, of the round table of King Arthur and the chivalrous train who shed their blood to redeem the holy sepulchre from the hands of the infidels. No human being could have passed a happier childhood than myself. My parents were possessed by the very spirit of kindness and indulgence. We felt that they were not the tyrants to rule our lot, according to their caprice, but the agents and creators of all the many delights which we enjoyed. When I mingled with other families, I distinctly discerned how peculiarly fortunate my lot was, and gratitude assisted the development of filial, of filial love. My temper was sometimes violent and my passions vehement, but, my, but by some law in my temperature, they were not they were turned not towards childish pursuits but to an eager desire to learn and not to learn all things indiscriminately i confess that neither the structure of languages nor the code of governments nor the politics of various states possessed attractions for me it was the secrets of heaven and earth that i desired to learn and whether it was the outward substance of things or the inner spirit of nature and the mysterious soul of of man that occupied me Still, my inquiries were directed to the metaphysical, or in its highest sense, the physical secrets of the world. Meanwhile, Clerval occupied himself, so to speak, with the moral relations of things. The busy stage of life, the virtues of heroes, and the actions of men were his theme, and his hope and his dream was to become one among those whose name are recorded in story as the gallant and adventurous benefactors of our species. The saintly soul of Elizabeth shone like a shrine dedicated lamp in our peaceful home. Her sympathy was ours, her smile, her soft voice, the sweet glance of her celestial eyes were ever those to bless and animate us. She was the living spirit of, of love to soften and attract. I might have become sullen in my study, rough through the ardor of my nature, but that she was there to subdue me to a semblance of her own gentleness. And Clerval? could aught ill entrench on the noble spirit of Clerval, yet he might not have been so perfectly humane, so thoughtful in his generosity, so full of kindness and tenderness amidst his passion for adventurous exploit. 
had she not unfolded to him the real loveliness of benefits and made the great the doing good of and made the doing good the end and aim of his soaring ambition i feel exquisite pleasure in dwelling on the recollections of childhood before misfortune had tainted my mind and changed its bright it and changed its bright visions of extensive usefulness into gloomy and narrow reflections upon self beside in drawing the picture of my early days i also record those events which led by insensible steps to my after tale of misery for when i would account to myself for the birth of that passion which afterwards ruled my destiny i find it arise like a mountain river from ignoble and almost forgotten sources but swelling as it proceeded it became the torrent which in its course has swept away all my hopes and joys natural philosophy is the genius that has regulated my fate i therefore i desire therefore in this narration to state those facts which led to me to my predilecti to my predilection for that science when i was thirteen years of age we all went on a party of pleasure to the baths near thonon the inclemency of the weather obliged us to remain a day confined to the inn in this house i chanced to find a volume of the works of cornelius agrippa i opened it with apathy the theory which he attempts to demonstrate and the wonderful facts which he relates soon changed this feeling into enthusiasm a new light seemed to dawn upon my mind and bounding with joy i communicated my discovery to my father my father looked carelessly at the title page of my book and said ah cornelius agrippa my dear victor do not waste your time upon this it is sad trash if instead of this remark my father had taken the pains to explain to me that the principles of agrippa had been entirely exploded and that a modern system of science had been introduced which possessed much greater powers than the ancient because the powers of the latter were chimerical while those of the former were real and practical under such circumstances i should certainly have thrown agrippa aside and have contented my imagination warmed as it was by returning with greater ardor to my former studies it is even possible that the train of my ideas would never have received the fatal impulse that led to my ruin but the cursory glance my father had taken of my volume by no means assured me that he was acquainted with its contents and i continued to read it with the greatest avidity when i returned home my first care was to procure the whole works of this author and afterwards and afterwards of paracelsus and albertus magnus i read and studied the wild fancies, fancies of these writers with delight they appear to me treasures known to few besides myself i have described myself as always having been imbued with a fervent longing to penetrate the secrets of nature in spite of the intense labor and wonderful discoveries of modern philosophers i always came from my stu studies discontented and unsatisfied sir isaac newton is said to have avowed that he felt like a child picking up shells besides the great and unexplored ocean of truth those of his successors in each branch of natural philosophy with whom i was acquainted appeared even to my boy's apprehension as tyros engaged in the same pursuit the untaught peasant beheld the elements around him and was acquainted with their practical uses the more learned philosopher knew little more he had partially unveiled the face of nature but her immoral lineaments were still a wonder and a mystery he might dissect anatomize and give names but not to speak of um final cause causes in their secondary and tertiary grades were utterly unknown to him i had gazed upon the fortifications and impediments that seemed to keep human beings from entering the citadel of nature and rashly and ignorantly i had rap repined so i'm going to stop here and continue in my next video to complete the chapter